Oh. So here we are in Munich and Lightning Hawk Day with Matt. Hello. Hi. Uh, so Matt is a well-known person, Bitcoin field developer. So uh, can you briefly tell tell us uh, what you do and what you're working on? Um, yeah, I have a bunch of projects. Uh, one of them, more relevant for Lightning Hack Day, is uh, Rust Lightning. So it's designed to be a Lightning library, which means instead of kind of doing everything, right, having a wallet and syncing the blockchain and all of those things, uh, which kind of all the existing Lightning implementations do, uh, it's kind of bring your own, right? So it's designed to fill the niche where you have an existing wallet that you've developed or that you're maintaining or you know, maybe you want to integrate it in a hardware wallet, something like that, where you need much tighter integration than LND or C Lightning or Clara will provide. Um, it's a really flexible API, but it still does all of the hard work for you. Am I correct um, that uh, among the like, major implementations, LND and C Lightning have a wallet in themselves, but Clara doesn't? Clara also depends on an external wallet. Right, right. Clara depends on an external wallet, but it also still has a, a large volume of the kind of complexity. Uh, of, I, if I understand correctly, it does download the chain and it does um, handle peer to peer connections and it's not flexible in the way you store the data and all that kind of stuff that you might need if you want to integrate it into an existing wallet. You know, maybe you have you know, this number of mobile wallets that like synchronize across devices. Well, you know, how do you do that safely uh, without kind of really tight control over how the lightning part of the application is running. Yeah, so Rust Lightning actually provides this kind of, say, say what would be a use case? If I'm a developer, I want to develop my lightning application, what uh, would I use Rust Lightning for? Right, so it's, yeah, really where you need much tighter control over how the lightning part of the daemon is operating than LMD or C Lightning or a clear provide, right? So they provide, nice interfaces where you can uh, manage the channels and send and receive funds and all those, that great stuff, but it doesn't have really tight control over, okay, well, when there's a state update and I need to store something to disk, actually I want to store that in an encrypted copy on a server, or um, I'm running on a hardware wallet and the way I connect to peers is actually over the USB bus and then I connect to the peer, or something like that, where you really need, you need to make sure it operates in conjunction with how your app works, like how your wallet operates, and not just kind of have a secondary wallet that is your Lightning wallet kind of hanging off the side. Yeah, yeah I see. And what stage of development is it in? Is it like alpha, beta, how, how reckless would it be to use it with <laughs> my net funds? Um, it's pretty far along. Uh, it's very stable in the sense that um, you know, it doesn't crash, it sends and receives payments, no problem, the lightning protocol part of it is, is really quite stable. Um, there's a few bits and pieces of on-chain handling left, you know, if your counterparty misbehaves in some really weird ways, it doesn't quite punish correctly. Um, and I still also want some changes into the lightning protocol before I would kind of consider it safe to use, you know, lightning even still today is somewhat reckless. Um, but giving developers kind of tighter control over how Lightning works is another step further reckless just in and of itself, irrespective of the state of the library. Um, and so I kind of want some tweaks to the Lightning protocol. They're all coming down the line, there's nothing you know particularly groundbreaking or whatever, but some minor things that were discussed uh, in the Lightning 1.1 design, uh, et cetera, that I kind of want to see before I would necessarily trust people to, to use this kind of thing. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, kind of uh, resonates with uh, with the uh, last talk of the conference by Jack Mozuko, where he um, like uh, underlined this point that the Bitcoin protocol is kind of more stable and enlightening have more room for experimentation, right? And we right. It's, not, it's not yet fixed as a protocol, even even as a protocol, right? Right, and and it never will be in the same way, right? It's not there's not global consensus, and so you know between any two peers on the Lightning network, they might use a drastically different protocol. I mean, there's not really anything in the Lightning Network that says you can't have two peers that don't even have a channel. They'll gladly route payments between them, but eh, they trust each other, so who cares? They'll settle with fiat later this week, you know. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't do something completely crazy or, you know, very different, whereas obviously in Bitcoin, which is a fundamentally a consensus system, well, you have to have global consensus, so you can't really do 
something completely wacko like that. Yeah, fantastic. So, some kind of uh, general thoughts or observation, or um, like, what do you, what do you think of progress of uh, Lightning, and what do you see coming next? What are the most pressing challenges that we must solve? Right. Um, you know, it's still early, so you still see you know the user experience around Lightning wallets is still not great. Um, at least. You know, it's gotten a lot better, but there's still like manual channel management. Like, why, why do I, as a user, have to think about the concept of channels? What, yeah, the concept <laughs> of channels fundamentally, right? And to some extent, there's protocol tweaks to resolve that, right? So splicing is a big one there, so that you can uh, send an on-chain payment from your channel balance without closing your channel, um, or increase your channel balance without closing your channel. All kinds of stuff like that, where the kind of great Right now, on a Lightning Wallet, the concept of having funds in a channel versus on-chain, they're like really, really are different pots of money and you can't intermix them without taking a while. Um, but that's something that can be resolved in the, at the protocol level. Um, so stuff like that, where the protocol makes changes and then as that's deployed, the UX gets much easier, but also just generally, you know, building better user experience around uh, autopilots that are smarter and, and work better, and you know fewer failed uh, channel, uh, fewer failed payments or faster payments. Um, you know we've seen a lot of issues here with people buying coffee with a lot of the mobile wallets where you know the payment will go through, but it'll take quite a while uh, because normally what's happening under the hood is it's trying the payment via one route, it's failing. Okay, let's try another route. That's failing. Let's try another route. That's failing. And that, that takes a while. Well, why, why is it that bad for such small payments? Because I would assume that, I mean, I would expect payments to fail relatively frequently if I try to pay, I don't know, $100, but I just want to pay uh, 10 cents. Or right, I, I think, I think mo many of the common failure cases are not correlated with the, the value of the payment. So a lot of the common failure cases are, you know, kind of dumb things like one of the nodes in the route is offline and you have to try the payment and get a message back from a node in the route that says, ah, the person you asked me to forward it to is offline, so I can't do anything for you. So it's not even the capacity issue. It's not like right. That. It's not even the capacity. It's just, and I mean, this is something that's resolvable, again, at the protocol level where, you know, we can have uh, smarter rumoring or even smarter route selection where you uh, more aggressively select routes. You know, maybe you're willing to pay a little bit of a higher fee as long as you the nodes on that route are online more often and are more likely to be online when you try to send the payment so that things can go through quicker. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things to do there that just make the user experience infinitely better with some, you know, I shouldn't say relatively minor tweaks, but tweaks that are kind of minor simplistically, but um, maybe have a lot of complexity about, you know, fine-tuning all these algorithms to make them uh, really behave in a way that's more optimal for users than just like pay the bare minimum fee. I'm not willing to pay one satoshi more than I need to, or it's like kind of useless. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's exciting. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thanks.